All right, so we'll go ahead and start. And uh, I was on spinal cord injury. And I said in spinal cord injury, very important to know is what first thing is, respiratory, paralysis, bowel and bladder, those are important, assessment. Then I'm going to go underneath, it says halo vest. Why do we use that for a spinal cord injury? And why? Underline the word immobilization. What is the practice when you have, you want the person to be immobilized? So the purpose is here, immobilization. Patient can walk around and that provides Im Im is immobilization and underline the word ambulation. They can walk around. They can walk around and they can be okay, but the whole purpose is using for immobilization. Then you will go underneath, it says here, if any rings or bolts are loose enough, you need to notify. The next line, pin care. So I want you to write down what kind of is this application Halo West is. A skeletal, write down the word. Skeletal is a word. And when you have skeletal means they have the pins. And what are you looking in those pins are infection. And how do you clean them with the sterile technique? So if they ask you what is Halo West is, it's a skeletal kind of traction and they're putting with to immobilize. And what would you keep in the room? It says underneath correct size and write down the word wrench, you can keep it. Uh, maybe a screwdriver, the word is there, or wrench. Uh, why? In case you have to open it and it's an emergency. Then in the last it says if cardiopulmonary resuscitation, if there is an, a, an emergency and you want to remove it, what side do you open? Only the front, it's called anterior. So they have anterior and posterior. The problem is where? In the back, the spinal cord. So, and you don't want to take out from the back, only you open the front and you do the CPR. What is important here also, I want you to write down on the side, no driving. The patient, they have halo vest, they can walk around, it's okay, because they cannot see proper vision. And their heads are more straight. They can see more, but they can't see on the side. So driving question. Patient says, I want to drive, no driving. And what are you cleaning here? The pin side. What is kind of this uh, halo vest is? The skeletal and monitoring for infection. What do you keep in the room? The wrench and the screwdriver. And the next thing is, remember, when they are immobilizing, and they're immobilizing from the head and the back, they would be able to eat okay. So they can open their mouth all right. Patient says, I cannot chew. I'm having a problem. I can't open my mouth. That means they need adjustment. Then you need to notify the physician. Everyone is okay? Halo vest is used for spinal cord injury. Pin care is important. Sterile technique is important. I want you uh, not to move on the next page, but let's go in the back. And on the back in your pages, are number 16 because it goes well with this injury because those are the complications. So let's go on page number 16 in the back and it says spinal cord injury. And you have SCI, spinal cord injury, page 16. Everyone is okay, page 16. And then when I'm continuing, 16, now don't go on the next craniotomy, go on the back. So they have turned around, all right? So when I will start this, I, I will finish this page, and then I'll go in the back page. Everyone is okay. Now, I will talk about, so what happened, your question. Patient has spinal cord injury, we were talking about, and what do we assess in spinal cord injury? We already talked about it, and I said, is mostly in young a person are very common spinal cord injury age 15 to 30. Most cord injuries 5, 6, 7, 12, and 1. And what do you look on injury? C2 and C3 highlight that is in the neck, cervical, go on page 16, on page number 16 in the back. 
and spinal cord injury is C2 and C3 is fatal. Yeah, you go on 16 page, skip one page here and go on 16, it'll be okay, all right. Now, when you have C2 and C3, injury are fatal. So fatal means they can compromise breathing and they can die, so it's very fatal. You've got to do for your patient is immediately for respiratory problems. So it's a very fatal. C4 affecting diaphragm and also phrenic nerve. Above C4 cause respiratory problem and paralysis of all four extremity. See, above C4, like C2 and C3, can affect very fatal, affecting respiratory, can affect upper and lower. C5 or below may have movement of the shoulders. As you're going down, the injuries would be more affecting the lower part. Thoracic level, when they're saying the question, thoracic, you look for underlying the word bowel and bladder. So thoracic injury is in the back. What are we assessing here is the bladder and the bowel. And leg paralysis. So remember, cervical upper is going to be affecting more respiratory and very fatal injury. And leg paralysis. So if they give you a question, patient has T6 or T12 injury, that means you're looking for paralysis and you're looking a complication. So what I'm going to talk about it, complication of spinal cord injury, which we all need to know we are nurses. You have patients who are coming back after spinal cord injury and you're dealing with them and what would you monitor the complication? Very important for NCLEX too. So complications of spinal cord injury, and they're saying in your question, you've got to read the question. Patient has a spinal cord injury, thoracic 6, thoracic 12, what are you monitoring? That means they're asking after the injury. Patients have complication, and it's called the complication, underline the word autonomic dysreflexia word. So one of the complications, I'm going to talk about autonomic dysreflexia. So I will leave that word here, but let's finish. There are some more information. Lumbar and sacral level. If you have lumbar and sacral level, loss of lower extremity, movement in lower extremity. So underline the word lower extremity. S2, S3 can cause problem in maturation. What is the word maturation? Is not able to pee. You guys have to go in the back of the pages who just came in on page number 16. So go on the back on page 16. So S2, S3 can lead to what? Neurogenic bladder. And what is the word maturation? They're not able to start pee. Whenever you see the word maturation, patient is not able to pee. I'll be clear. And what is neurogenic? I said yesterday. Neurogenic bladder, they have no feeling. They have no sensation. What do they need, this patient, when they have neurogenic bladder? Is the Foley catheter. Remember, we, I mentioned that yesterday. So what happens when you have lower part, S2, S3, or lower part of the injury to the spinal cord is, remember, the word neurogenic bladder. What is a neurogenic bladder? They have no feeling and they cannot start pee. And not able to empty the bladder. In male, S2, if they have injury, the problem, they may have erection, but not able to ejaculate because of the nerve damage. Then you have S2, S4, prevent erection and ejaculation. As you're moving down, is affecting the lower part. I'll be clear. So uh, some wording here. So you have some idea that in spinal cord injury, what would be the problem here is breathing problem. And what would be the problem? They're paralyzed and the problem is what? Neurogenic bladder. 
So what would be the problem here? They cannot be. And now I will move on and let's turn back the page. I skip the craniotomy. It's a repeat, we already talked. And let's go to the last page is emergency intervention. Now the question is your patient fell and patient has spinal cord injury. What do you use to move your patient? Underline the word backboard. Backboard means the hardboard. I'll be clear. Now because you don't want the back to move. So that's your answer. Patient is coming. Just go in the back, in the last page. In the back page, everyone, is, it says page 18 or 17, some of you. So don't go on craniotomy, go on the back page. And what does it say here is backboard. So question, you have a patient who has a spinal cord injury, what do you do in moving a patient? Is number one, if your patient is coming in transportation, use the board because you don't want to move the back. Are we clear? Because it's going to injure more. And also, prevent head flexion and log rolling. How do you move them? Log rolling. And also, keep the patient in neutral position. Now, if they ask you patient fell, and patient had spinal cord injury, leave them on the back. Don't turn them on side. No other position, no prawn position, no lateral position. You don't want to touch their back. Are we clear? Wherever patient is, leave them on the back. Recumbent, let them lay on that position. No other position. Make sure you add there. Any question? You're going to do neuro question. You will find that question. You have a patient who had a spinal cord injury. What position do you do? Just leave them on the back. Don't turn them. What do you use in transferring? Use the backboard. Are we clear? What do you turn your patient after surgery or any time? Log rolling. Log rolling means you're using the sheet and you're turning a patient completely in one turn. Are we clear? So what do we turn a patient log rolling? Remember, we are nurses. A lot of questions on turning, positioning are there. So position are leave the patient on the back. Hardboard is important, backboard is important, and log rolling. Now I will move on the complications. Patient has spinal cord injury, and they're going to see what they will do it. They have a halo traction, or what traction, and surgery, but your questions are going to be, what do you monitor patient after is they have uh, the injury? There are two complications. Number one is a spinal shock. So I will put the first, a spinal shock. So highlight that word, and I want everyone to memorize the wording, a spinal shock. What is a spinal shock is patient has sudden changes in the patient failure of communication. That means there is sensation, upper and lower neurons. And spinal shock, very important, patient after injury has only for a spinal shock, I want to highlight the word three to six weeks. So maybe patient has three weeks, six weeks, and that is early complication. Immediately, patient has a spinal cord injury. So what is your first complication? Spinal shock. And how long does it stay? Maybe three to six weeks. Next word is symptom. And I said few of the wording. What do you monitor your patient here is the word is flaccid paralysis. Remember, I said, what do you monitor? Flaccid. Flaccid word is patient muscles are weak and patient is paralyzed. Flaccid paralysis, that's important. And second word, I want you to write down the word low blood pressure. You have hypotension and pulse rate is low is called bready, cardia, and pulse rate. Any question, we are looking in spinal shock. What is a spinal shock? It's the early complication of spinal cord injury, but remember one word is low blood pressure. You guys have in your notes, highlight the word hypotension, highlight the word bradycardia, and highlight the word paralysis. 
I had all important wording in these notes. And the last word is called paralysis. What do they have here is the paralysis. So remember the word is, I said, is paralysis. So what is the patient has? Paralysis. Patient muscles are weak. What is low here? The blood pressure. What is low here is the patient is having bradycardia. And what do you monitor patient here is uh, flaccid, the same goes with paralysis. And the under, then you, have, you guys have there paralytic ileus. What is the meaning paralytic ileus? They are not able to move bowels. That means no BM and no gas. That means they are paralyzing the BM. Are we clear? So what are you assessing your patient here is paralytic ileus, and also I want you to add there the word bladder because what is the problem? Same. We said what happened to the patient when they have spinal cord injury, and I said earlier the word flaccid, and I said check for bladder and bowel. So what are you assessing? Maybe a question. Patient is in spinal shock. Remember, very important is the blood pressure. What is the blood pressure is here? Low, hypotension. What is the pulse is here? Low, so blood pressure and pulse is going to be called bradycardia. What are you assessing here? Maybe your question, paralytic ileus. What are you monitoring here? Paralytic ileus. May not be paralytic ileus, then maybe what are you assessing the bladder and the bowel movement. Why? Because they are paralyzed. But what is important here is to work. Is the early complication of spinal cord injury, which only lasts for three to six weeks, and patient's blood pressure is low here. They are same, they are paralyzed. That is called spinal shock. So everyone, I want to memorize the spinal shock is what? Complication of spinal cord injury. And what does the patient has here? Hypotension. We all know paralyzed. We all know paralytic ileus work is important. Paralytic ileus goes in GI. And because it's right here, is you're assessing the bowel sounds. Next is, I will move on to the next uh, symptom. It says intervention. Assess bowel sound monitor bowel and urinary retention and hypotension. So in your question, what is spinal shock? Early complication. What are you monitoring is hypotension. What are you monitoring? Bowel and bladder and paralytic ileus. That is your answers. Next is I'm going to move on. Autonomic dysreflexia. Very important we all know. Autonomic dysreflexia is also called, highlight the word, hyper Flexia is they can use this uh, reflexia or hyperflexia. After spinal shock is resolved, this comes after shock is resolved. That means later on, patient has to live all his life. They are paralyzed. So this complication comes later. And what is the complication is just a little bit difference is here is above T6 in your question, caused by visceral distension, right? Highlight the word visceral distension. What is the meaning visceral distension? That they have a problem and they cannot empty is in there. And what is the other word I like you to remember is the visceral distension and bladder. And they use the word I will write here noxious stimulation. So what is the meaning noxious? Something is bothering the patient. Noxious, a stimulation word. If you will do the question, exam cram, other book, they may not have a lot of other answer. They may have only one answer. What is autonomic dysreflexia? Is stimulation of noxious stimulation. What do you do for your patient? Maybe one answer. Remove the noxious stimulation. That means something patient is bothered, patient is not comfortable, and that stimulation is causing. And what will happen here, I'm going to go over. 
But I want you, what is the reason patient has here is visceral distension or bladder distension. That means they can pee, they cannot have bowel movement, but they didn't give you that word. And what does the word is they're using? Noxious uh, stimulation. So I want you to write down the word noxious stimulation. Any stimulation, anything is causing discomfort to your patient, they're going in autonomic dysreflexia. Now you have, it is a neurological emergency. It's an emergency, and it's neurological emergency. We got to treat right away. And what does the patient complain? Let's go in data collection. What does the patient complain here? Severe headache. Patient is coming here, and your answer would be, patient has thoracic injury, patient is admitted after spinal cord injury, patient is complaining, I'm having headache. Underline that word. And <clears throat> on the headache, I want you to write down the word, blood pressure is high. So number one, patient is complaining headache. Any question when you are looking, headache. What is the meaning of headache? Blood pressure is high. And what do you monitor for your patient? Hypertension. Are we clear? So what is the patient has here? Headache. <clears throat> I want you to write down the blood pressure. What was in spinal shock, I said? Low blood pressure. What is autonomic dysreflexia? Hypertension. That is one difference. So let's keep on highlighting the word nasal stuffiness because of blood pressure. Pilo erection. Very important word for your question. Pilo erection word. And what is pilo erection is the goose flash, goose bump. And because of their pain and nervous system, and they feel very discomforted, and patient is feeling goose flash. And dilated pupil, their eyes are dilated. So these symptoms, they can throw you in an NCLEX exam. And they will say, patient has T12 injury, thoracic 12, and patient is admitted, patient is complaining headache, patient has pyloraction, patient blood pressure is high, and pupil are dilated. What is the patient's diagnosis? You got to know the symptom. Your questions are going to be more diagnosis, but we got to know the symptom. So what happened to the patient here? They're diagnosed for what disease here? Autonomic dysreflexia. So you will pick up the answer. When you see hypertension, never pick spinal shock. Spinal shock has low blood pressure. Autonomic dysreflexia has what? Hypertension. The spinal shock comes earlier. Autonomic dysreflexia comes later, after three to six weeks. Some question, they will say the word parasympathetic nerve, because what is this? Nervous system. Are we clear? So remember, is don't get nervous when you see the word parasympathetic nerves are responding. So what happened when you are in pain? Your blood pressure goes up. What happened when you are in pain? Your pupil are reacting. These are symptoms are hypertension. So what happened to the patient here? It's a neurological disorder. Patient is paralyzed. All that pain goes to the sympathetic nervous system and patient is responding, but what happened to the patient with this pain? The blood pressure goes high. So everyone is okay? What is autonomic dysreflexia? In some question, they will say what word? What is the reason for autonomic dysreflexia? Noxious a stimulation. And I said, what is the reason patient is having pain? Because they cannot pee and they cannot pass the bowel movement. Everyone is okay. And I will go on in the intervention. When they give you this question and they're saying patient has thoracic injury, now don't pick up the answer to call the doctor the first thing. What is the first priority here is the blood pressure. We know that there is a problem, there is a pain, and what would you do, the first thing is lowering the blood pressure. What do you do as a nurse to lower the blood pressure? We will move on. So everyone is okay. What is autonomic dysreflexia? Comes after a spinal shock. 
What is the sign of autonomic dysreflexia is hypertension. What is pyloraction word? Goose flush. What is the pupil are dilated because of the pain? And also, patient is complaining headache. And they have nasal stiffness. If you will read, there are a lot of answers you will see on that. But these are important words. Is you have pyloraction word, you have goose flush word, and you must know hypertension. What is another word everyone should know? Noxious, because some of the question you will have noxious word, and remember, they might be saying respond to your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, because pain, pain message is going to the brain, and what does it affect on your system? Your blood pressure goes up. And what would you do on your patient when the blood pressure is up? Number one is I will go on the answer, what do you do? So first priority, because they might say patient blood pressure 200 over 160, because the blood pressure is very high. So what do you do here when you have this problem is autonomic, number one, is the blood pressure. What do you do as a nurse? Do not pick up answer to call the doctor. The first thing is the position. Raise the head of the bed. What happens when you raise the head of the bed? It helps to lower the blood pressure. That's number one. Number two, because the word is noxious stimulation. Now sometimes they will give also make a patient comfortable. I will ask you to add their comfort. If they're saying loosen up the clothes, that's okay. Room is cold, air and draft, that's okay. Change linen, that's all right. Patient is laying in a wet. Positioning of leg may not be right. Any discomfort answers are there, make your patient comfortable and raise the head of the bed because pain comes from what? Any kind of pain patient is going through. Maybe patient is laying and they have no sensation. So that pain is triggering and leading to the blood pressure. See, you've got to keep all the things in mind because a lot of questions just have open the shirt, loosen up the clothes, change the linen, proper positioning. If you have, in your exam, you will have all that apply answer. So we don't need to know only one answer. We got to get more answers. Number three, what do you do now? Check the bladder. Mostly this patient has Foley catheter. So number two, I want you to add when you're <coughs> raising the head of the bed, patient's comfort, linen, positioning. And then what do we do here is checking the patient's bladder. And what do we do on bladder here? First thing, if they have Foley catheter. So what do we check? Foley catheter. And what do you check in Foley? Kink. I had a patient, he was in a lot of pain, had a Foley catheter, his catheter was blocked. And patient know very well that this is the diagnosis they have. And I'll tell you that patient was sitting in the hallway and screaming, I need help. I'm having autonomic dysreflexia. He knew that. He knew the wording. And nurses were sitting and they said, what is autonomic dysreflexia? What is it going on? What is that? And they, they forgot. And I was just going. And I said, in the hallway, and I said, take him in the room and check his catheter. And so we took him in the room. He was very alert, knew very well, young guy. And he said, I'm having autonomic dysreflexia. I need some help. And the nurses are just sitting. Sometimes we study so much and that you do forget a lot of things when you're applying, but it reminds you back when you're working, but because we have a lot of patients with paralysis, a lot of patients can go in autonomic day, and very important for as a nurses in exam and to know this wording. So what happened to the patient? He's very discomforted. His blood pressure was up, his face <coughs> is flushing, and he was very discomforted. So what do you, do you check here? If they have a catheter, and your answer is, what do you check here is the kink, and make sure the catheter is straining. If, they, if your question comes, there is no catheter, what do you do? Check for distension. And what do you do? Answer may be a straight catheter. What catheter do we put if they don't have fully catheter? Intermittent catheter, straight catheter. Now, 
remember in your question. If they ask you how frequently you're going to catheterize, how frequently you will catheterize your patient, I will write it here because in the bottom you may not be able to see. Best is your four to six hours. If you have six to eight hours or eight to 12, that's too long. This would be the best because you don't want to wait too long to catheterize. So you've got to keep it in mind if you're going to catheterize and they're asking you how many times you will catheterize or answer is you do in and out catheter, straight catheter, and how often? Four to six. Don't go eight hours. Eight hours is long time if someone cannot pee. So four to six hours. And what do we do here? Catheterize. Th third one is check for impaction. Check for impaction. And when we are checking for impaction, check the patient's chart, see when did they had bowel movement. And why? Because that pain can trigger. Now you can notify RN, and or if you do have antihypertensive medication, you can take it number four, give the medication. You already have the order. Then you notify your RN, and then you will do documentation. I'll be clear. So what is autonomic dysreflexia is, is a complication of the patient with a spinal cord injury. Everyone is okay how you will answer your question on spinal cord injury patient are. What are the two complications are? A spinal shock and autonomic dysreflexia. What is autonomic dysreflexia is hypertension. What is spinal shock is low blood pressure. Keep that in mind. And what are we assessing here? And they might use the word paralytic ileus, bowel movement. What are you looking here? Catheter. What is the patient is having because patients are paralyzed and any discomfort, any pain can trigger and lead to what? Hypertension. So not only remembering bubble and bladder, remember, maybe a comfort for your patient and that you will go on there. Now I will move back where we left it. So we covered spinal cord injury and complication. Next page was six and I will go on cerebral aneurysm. Now those who have done cardio, we do have two aneurysm, cardiac aneurysm. We start with the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Since we are in neuro, we are talking about aneurysm. What is aneurysm is cerebral aneurysm. When we are seeing the word cerebral is for the brain in neuro chapter. And what is aneurysm is underlying the word dilation, overstretching of the cerebral artery. Underline that word cerebral artery is having what over dilation. And what does it lead to? Underline that word rupture. And what is one of the reasons for cerebral artery aneurysm are, I want you to write down on the side, hypertension. And what happened to them if the blood pressure goes up is going to rupture. So what is your job is here, because it's cerebral, is I will write down on the side ICP because it's in the brain. And what do you prevent this patient if it's going to rupture and is already big is your blood pressure. And what do you prevent for your patient? Let's go your answers. And what are the answers you will go? Patient is admitted. Patient has cerebral aneurysm. I want you to add their bed rest on the top. And the bed rest, you can turn here. Semi Fowler sideline is not patient has a ICP yet, so it's okay. Patient is mostly you need to keep them quiet and rested. Very, very important third line. Non-stimulating environment. It says dark room, non-stimulating environment. So write down on the side. Remember how your questions are. Patient is admitted cerebral aneurysm. Immediately you know, why do you keep the patient in non-stimulating environment? Because your blood pressure. 
will go up. And it's in the brain. If you are looking for ICP also, non-stimulating environment, dark room, quiet room. Mm -hmm. Telephone is not allowed. Why? Because telephone, a lot of people calls and make your blood pressure to go up. You don't want that, okay? So you are restricting the call. And maybe uh, your music, not too stimulating music, can leave your blood pressure high. Next is visitors, same reason visitors. Some people you don't want to see. The blood pressure goes up, they come in and they raise your blood pressure. So same thing for your patient. Visitors, telephone, room is very important. And fluid restriction. Maintaining non-thermia, that means if the blood pressure and their temperature <coughs> is affected, sedation, and pain controlling. You control the pain, any kind of pain. Why? Pain increase your blood pressure. So you got to go. See how your questions are directed? What we have learned, but we got to practice that, is pain. Keep the patient under pain control. They're laying in a bed. It can lead to DVT. And also you can have a stocking, anti-embolic stocking. And next is very, very important, prevent straining, well, salva, and write down the word. Uh, you do have underneath stool softening. Because pushing, that can lead to what? ICP to go up. So you got to give stool softener. Anti-convulsion means you are preventing them from seizure. Everyone is okay? Cerebral aneurysm. As you read your question, what are you preventing here? Hypertension. What are you preventing here? A stimulation. What kind of room are we going to give here? The quieter room. What do you give them? A stool softener, because that can cause your ICP to go up. And what happens is if it ruptures, the patient level of consciousness will change and ICP will change. So cerebral aneurysm is in the brain. And remember, two is very important blood pressure work. Quieter room is here. Stool softener, you remember. Anything to lower the blood pressure and give them blood pressure medication. So that goes your cerebral aneurysm. Now I'm going to go for seizure disorders. And what is the common drug for your seizure is? What is a common drug that everyone should know is dilentin. Common, common drug. Everyone should know dilentin. And what is the dilentin side effect is? Hyperplasia of the gum. Are we clear? Hyperplasia of the gum, gum bleeding. Visiting the dentist may be answer. Maybe a soft toothbrush is an answer. What is a dilantin level, normal dilantin level? 10 to 20, write down the word. And why do you give dilantin for seizure? And so I want you to write down, everyone should know dilantin. Now there are more drugs are, will be coming more, is dilantin. dilantin you're giving for seizure. We have patients who have seizure, the kind of seizures we have, but everyone should know the bad seizures are tonic-clonic seizure. Tonic-clonic seizure has aura, underline the word aura. What is the aura word? Is A-U-R-A, -A, aura. They can feel that seizure is coming. Before seizure, they can smell, they can feel that they're going to get the seizure. So tonic-clonic seizure, patient has aura. Number second line, tonic means rigidity. Tonic means they become rigid. Then next is for 10 to 20 seconds. And when they have seizure, they lose consciousness. Third line, clonic. Clonic means jerking movement. So what, what are two things are? Rigid and they are jerking. Are we clear? So rigid and jerking movement are seizure disorders. So patient has tonic and clonic seizure and seizures, they have aura. I want you to add on the side, if you have a question, 
and they're saying patient has, or child has tonic and clonic seizure. What do you monitor after the seizure? Remember, they're very strong and the body becomes stiff. So what can they do here? Bleeding, biting the tongue, maybe biting, and maybe the answer, check for bleeding. Where? Around the mouth, because maybe they bit the tongue, maybe they bit the lip. So what do you monitor? Tonic-clonic seizure, bleeding. Number two, what do you monitor here is incontinency. The seizure are so strong that they can pee and they are incontinent. So they're looking, what do you monitor patient after seizure? Bleeding, and number two, maybe patient is incontinent. Are we clear? So tonic-clonic seizure is a long seizure. The body become what? Stiff, and they are jerking. Rigidity, number two, absence seizure, pay attention and go on the third line, is victim appears day dreaming, most common in children. So your question may be, child is a preschool, in the classroom, he appears he's having daydreaming. What does the meaning is? Maybe child is having what? What kind of seizure? Absence seizure. So your answer would be absence seizure. So where do you see more common absence seizure are? Is daydreaming and go on the first line. Brief seizure last second may or may not lose consciousness. Seizure may occur several times during a day. But when you see the daydreaming world and most common in children question, Pete's question, then you're going into what? Absence seizure. Next page, we'll move on. Myloconic seizure. They have brief jerking and stiffness. Number D, atomic seizure momentary loss of muscle tone. Partial seizure, when they're saying partial, they have two kinds, simple partial and the complex partial seizure. And what is in simple seizure are, is big motor symptoms that are underlying the word localized in specific area. And third line, they remain conscious and may feel, may report aura. So simple partial, localized, and client remain conscious. Complex is in the brain, is involved. Second line, temporal bone, a temporal lobe. And patient altered behavior. They're not aware of loss of consciousness for few seconds. Just knowing the wording. Tonic, clonic, everyone should know. Absence is in the children, very common. And we all know what happened in the seizure. Patients are, they are becoming stiff and they have jerky movement. Are we clear? Next is nursing intervention. <clears throat> what do you do after the seizure is, what do you monitor patient after the seizure? Underline the word, allow them to sleep. Nothing you can do. The seizure is over. Can you allow CNA to stay with your patient or UAP? Yes, because you're not doing anything on there. There's nothing you will do, but patient is sleeping. And sideline position. Patient is having a strong seizure, tonic and clonic seizure, or after seizure. Any question, only one position we go on, sideline. And why? To prevent aspiration. Next one is confusion and disorientation. And underline the word post-ictical seizure. Our patient is in post-ictical phase. What do you do? Nothing. What do you do post-ictical? Let the patient sleep. And what do you monitor here is patient is confusion and disorientation. Everyone knows the word aura. Everyone know the word post-ictical. Post-ictical goes after seizure. What are we monitoring after seizure here is confusion. Are we clear? So what is your answer after seizure? You're monitoring confusion and also you're monitoring disorientation. What is post-ictical word is after the seizure. Next is aura word. What is aura word is, we said already, 
underline the word sensory or signal to the client that seizure is about to come. Patient is feeling seizure is coming. Not loss of consciousness and underline the word incontinency. I said earlier, after the patient had seizure, especially the tonic and clonic, they become incontinence. If they give you a question, you're going to admit a patient who has seizure, what, who has a history of seizure. They're not saying meningitis, you don't need isolation, but patient has history of seizure, what do you keep in the room? You don't have to put them in isolation, but what do you keep in the room? Oxygen and suction, underline the word. And also, I would say pad the side rails. You can pad the side rails, why? Because when they are having seizure, and to protect them from injury. What do we keep them? Side rails padded, padded side rails. Loosen the clothes during seizure and no alcohol with any medication with the seizure or otherwise. Because why? It depresses the brain more and avoids stress because stress can cause seizure, fatigue can cause seizure, and stroke means the bright light can cause the seizure. In your answer, what do you prevent your patient? Now, I want you to add on the side. You already know the positioning. You already know the safety. Now, what do you do if you're taking a patient for shower and patients start seizing? Just lay them on the floor. You not, may not have time to go back to the room. Patient is walking, patient fell, patient is having seizure. Lay them. Only what do you protect? the head, put something underneath because you don't want them. In the bed, they already have the mattress, so it's not going to hurt. Sometimes you may remove the pillow because keeping pillow, they can go more in the front. They may not go in the back, are we clear? So that may be your answer, padding of the side rail. Remain with your patient anytime they're seizure. Do not open the mouth, do not tie any restraint. Nothing, but we used to do. When I was a LVN many years ago, we used to have every bed. And what do we used to have? The tongue blade, padded tongue blade. And we used to stick to the bed. We had 10 patients and we are going to put all those tongue blade in the room. Why? To open their mouth. No longer, I'm telling you, is the things are changing. Just like what she said in the morning for lumbar puncture. And there are a lot of things. And I was, my friend had a surgery for knee and she said CPM machine they're not using even when she's going home. So when she discharged home, they gave CPM machine at home. And I have seen CPM machine right away. So a lot of changes will come as you move. But think about on seizure. We used to run and open the mouth to prevent, but what we have come to that is a lot of injuries by forcing and opening, and it's not doing anything. They are breathing, but you got to turn on the side that can help them to take out the fluids or prevent aspiration. But once your seizure is there, you just monitor. And what do you monitor for your patient with seizure? So if your questions are, number one, we must note the time. And number two, write down the word duration is important. What is the meaning duration? How long? the patient had the seizure. Are we clear? How long? Five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. That is important, is the seizure. And number three word is activity. What is the meaning activity here? Is their face, are they twitching? Their eyes are rolling, are we clear? So activity means of their facial is more the muscles, how they're moving. So sometimes the wording comes time, activity, and duration. But if you have to pick up which one is important, you will go for duration. I'll be clear. So which one do you pick up the best would be for duration. How long the patient has duration for the seizure is important. Do you think as a nurses, are we going to write it down in the med book? Your patient had seizure, yes. We all remember when you're going to work or in any question are your MAR, your med book. MAR, you have every day 
And remember the dates. We have on the top the dates and in your med book till 31st. Whatever the date is here, and we have each shift monitor for seizure. When the, did your patient have seizure in your time? So if I'm a seven to three nurse, I will say no. If I am three to 11 nurse and 11 to seven, you have, and you have patient two seizure, one seizure. How does the doctor would know how many time your patient had seizure? You've got to document in MER. That means is at the end, we are supposed to do the summary. So depends each building how they do it. But when you assess end of the month, we will count and we will put summary for seizures. And what do we write here? Patient has total 15 seizures. And then we will say how many? 7 to 3, 3 to 11, and 11. None was in morning. Mostly patient has 5 or maybe 10 in the night time. Are we clear? So when the physician comes, they're not going to call you and you will say, well, I don't remember if he had a seizure. Who will remember? So what do we do? We document. And so doctor, how do they review their medication? By looking at documentation. And it should be visible to the doctors. It should be closer to the doctor's physician progress notes so they can see and assess when does the patient have seizure. Everyone is okay. Seizure questions are important. We have a lot of patients on seizure. And remember, when you are giving medication, a lot of time your medication are liquid. You have patients who have tube feeding. You've got to shake the bottle. I'll tell you, a lot of time, nurses even not, not even have opened the bottle. And not even giving. What happened? Doctor has increased dilenting. And your dilenting level was five. When the doctor questioned, why is it five? When I already increased the medication. So what does it mean? What does it mean? We are not giving medication. Very important is check the doctor's order, read good. Sometimes you can find the medication. It's a liquid, maybe in the bottom of the, your med card is here. Don't just go blindly and give medication and sign your drug. We know right away, we know right away who is doing what. So everyone remember as a nurses that you give medication. And a lot of time, the liquid medication, you got to shake. And that's one of the answers. Question may be, you're giving liquid medication, you didn't shake. So what happened? The drug is in the bottom. And what are you giving? It's just the liquid. Are we clear? And some of the medication, like Dilantin, you got to hold it. If you have a tube feeder, not with the food, tube feeding, you got to clamp your tube feeding one to two hours before and after. That means you cannot give about four hours patient feeding if you're giving liquid dilantin. So make sure you follow through with your drug questions are, and everyone should know dilantin comes in liquid, and dilantin, you're giving them to the two feeding patients, and you have to hold the medication. Everyone must know the word here, aura, post ictical phase, duration of the seizure. We all need to know the position, turning on the side to prevent aspiration. Now I will move on status epilepticus. After this, we'll take a break. So let's finish status epilepticus. Means is a grand mal seizure. It's a grand mal seizure and does not regain consciousness. And the seizure can run for 10 minutes to 30 minutes are epilepticus. That's a long seizure and patient is not regaining consciousness. Remember, it's a long seizure. Simple word, long seizure. And patient is, why patient is having? Which patient are you going to monitor for status epilepticus? Number one, causes non-compliance. Patient is not taking his medication. He's going to have a bad seizure. Number two is head trauma patient. Patient hit his head. Maybe patient is going in long seizure. Number third reason, alcohol withdrawal. 
Alcohol withdrawal leads to seizure. So what are you monitoring patients with alcohol withdrawal are seizure. I, uh, I will talk about alcohol withdrawal. We did in mental health, those who haven't done. But yes, we must know alcohol withdrawal question. And number one, you can go into seizure. So these three answers are important. And let's finish next page, the treatment, and we'll take a break. Neurological emergency. Any question, what is status epilepticus? Is the long seizure? And what do you do when patient is having long seizure? What medication do you give? Number one, what is the problem here? Oxygen. You've got to start IV. And maybe airway is the breathing. Oxygen, airway, IV. And also remember the word you give them, Valium. What is a volume depressors? I want you to add there CNS, central nervous system depressant. No alcohol with volume also. And when you're giving IV volume, what are you monitoring? Respiratory, because it depresses the respiration. So every time you learn something would be helpful. So add a few things. At event, you can give them. But phenobarbital and dilantin and cerebrex is your seizure medication. So what do you give immediately when somebody is having seizure? Valium, your answer. And what do you give them? Adivan. What is the status epilepticus is a long seizure. What are you monitoring patient when they have status epilepticus? Airway. Everyone is OK? Airway. And you give immediately. Value. Let's take a break and then we'll finish what we're up in the next.